Today, as I record this, I invite your prayers for the people of Florida who even now face Hurricane Irma, for those suffering after the earthquake in Mexico, for those who face Jose and Katia, uh, those storms and the, and the fires in California. We know your fear, your grief, and your trial, and we send you our love and support to our brothers and sisters around the world. For those across the Gulf of Mexico, it has been almost two weeks since Hurricane Harvey first began to ravage Texas. For some, it has been less than a week, and many of us are still dealing with the devastating impact that's been left behind. Some even project that Harvey will be the costliest natural disaster in United States history, costing more than $190 billion. In the Diocese of Texas alone, we have 25 insurance claims that have been filed by our churches. 10 of our clergy homes have flooded. 83 clergy have been significantly impacted. And even our diocesan staff has people with homes flooded. In the wake of Harvey, it stretches all the way from Palacios to Orange and affects hundreds upon hundreds of parishioners' homes and lives. As I speak these words, much of the Diocese of Texas remains underwater. The economic, emotional, physical, and spiritual impact in people's lives is too significant to measure. And so amid such devastation as your bishop, I'd just like to say a few things. The first is that I am humbled uh, and grateful and I thank you. I am filled with gratitude for everyone who has helped and continues to help, especially those who themselves have suffered loss and are still giving sacrificially of their time and treasure to help restore others to a sense of health and well-being. The stories I could tell, the generosity I have seen is beyond anything I could ask or imagine. You have been, you are, and continue to be neighbors serving neighbors. You have turned your churches into centers who are providing food and clothing and diapers for people. You have rescued people. Literally, parishioners have gone out in their boats. We had one senior warden who actually answered a phone call from a boat in the midst of a, a rescue uh, regarding a search, uh, search process that he's involved in. You've opened up your churches to be shelters and have sheltered by our count hundreds and hundreds of people through uh, the storm. Uh, one small congregation of about 130 people have already mucked out in the first days after the storm 59 houses. People are contributing and helping uh, to provide rent assistance to prevent people from being kicked out of their homes because of lack of employment uh, in their day laborer jobs. Uh, we have pastoral teams that uh, have been making phone calls and visits. The other day when I was in Dickinson, uh, we went through the, one of the areas that many people got to see on TV and the, the stacks of uh, house gutting, uh, just every, every home, every yard was uh, filled with stacks, some of them uh, higher than my own, my own head, which is the case in, in my mother's uh, neighborhood and in fact in her yard. And, and uh, Katie Mears, who's uh, our Episcopal Relief and Development Disaster uh, person, was here with us and traveling with us. And, and she said, you have to realize that those piles, uh, people see the piles from outside. And if you have an experience, you see the piles, you think, oh my gosh, what loss. But for those of us who have done that work and mucked out our homes and people's homes, those piles are victory piles. They are piles uh, not unlike uh, the hill at Golgotha, uh, where the cross stands to say that this disaster is not going to have the last word. Uh, we uh, realize in these moments that we are given to one another by God. As a diocese, 
uh, we were prepared for Harvey not by not by the the uh, resources that we have, not by uh, our leadership. We were prepared for Harvey because of our love for one another. We do have a recovery plan, and we will recover together. We have done this before. It's not the last hurricane. It, 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 it isn't the first. We are committed to the financial, relational, and spiritual health of our churches and leaders and communities. And we have the resources in one another and the financial resources and the spiritual resources that are needed because our God abundantly provides for us. We have partners from around the world who are giving and praying and offering labor for the work that faces us. We will continue our partnership with Episcopal Relief and Development. I want to acknowledge that this is a really rough time. Uh, maybe you lost your home or a friend of yours did or your mother or father, maybe your rector or priest. Um, I want to say to be kind to yourself and to each other and to be patient. In moments like this, it's our character who makes this what it is just as much uh, as the actions uh, that we do. Hurricane Harvey uh, will reveal our personal and corporate strengths as well as our weaknesses. Be patient and be grateful. Courage and strength and adrenaline enabled us to power through the initial results of the storm, to see before us in one another our common humanity, to see before us our neighbor. But adrenaline will not carry us through the next phase. And all too quickly, we will return to our old ways. It's our work to see in one another from the vantage point of those piles and from the vantage point of the cross. It's, it is from that place that we can see God's hand at work in the world around us and that we can see that we are God's hand at work. As a diocese, our mission continues. Harvey does not change that, does not change our context. Yes, the circumstance in which that mission is lived out has been changed for a while. Our work is now, as it always has been though, to foster reconciling Christian communities that speak to the hopes and hurts of the people in our neighborhoods and in our cities. To get to know our neighbors, to encounter God in the vulnerable and joy-filled process of seeking and serving Christ in all people. The recovery work that lies ahead of us gives us a new set of circumstances in which God's mission can be lived out. God's mission continues to the people of the Diocese of Texas. As Mordecai told Esther, for such a time as this we have been called to serve our neighbor, to lift up one another, and to move forward as God's people hand in hand, restoring, transforming, and changing the world around us.